happy Monday, everyone. It's time for another Watch and Learn. But this isn't just any Watch and Learn, because today marks a very special day. That's right, I'm sure you all know. Today is the three-month anniversary of the Watch and Learn, which is the only thing I do on any sort of regular schedule. So in the spirit of regularity, let's get right into it. Now, if you hear a strange echo, it's because there's an echo. And I can't do anything about that. Sorry. All right, we have someone playing a Gren Maju deck going up against Virtual World. Player activates Virtual World Gate and then activates Virtual World Zhizhi, or Zhaiji, targeting Virtual World Gate and sending away Virtual World Gate Chuche. They special summon Gigi. Virtual World Lili activates its effect, targeting Gigi. Virtual World Gate Quinlong Long triggers in response. Lili is summoned. Virtual World Gate Zhu Zhan Wu is sent to the graveyard. Virtual World Gate Quin Long's effect, Quin Long's effect activates again, banishing Quin Long and adding in Mahime, Lulu. They discard their Max C. They activate Lulu, targeting Virtual World Gate again. Send away another Chuche. Lulu is, Lulu is summoned. They add a Lao Lao to hand. Now they make Coral Dragon using GG and Lulu. They summon a token collector and then use it and Coral Dragon to make Baron de Fleur. Coral Dragon lets them to draw a card. Virtual Gate sends Yan Yan. Lao Lao special summon. Gigi is special summoned. Yan Yan's effect activates, summoning itself. Lao Lao and Gigi make Raphne's Crocker Dragon Arceus. Arceus allows him to draw a card. Nyan Nyan and Lili make QB Chen Chen. QB Chen Chen and Crocodragon Dragon make True King of All Calamities. They set two back row. Pass turn. At the end phase, they use Gizmakarochi's effect to summon itself, banishing seven. The opponent's Gigi is added back to hand. And turn changes over. They draw a Gadarla. True King of All Calamities activates its effect, declaring Light. They tribute their opponent's Baron de Fleur to summon the Gamma Seal. They summon their own Gadarla and use it and Gizmekarochi to make Dingirsu. They go into the battle phase, end the battle phase, and pass turn. Opponent activates the effect of Mahime Lulu, targeting Quinlong. Sending in Yan Yan to special summon Lulu. Kibi's effect, Kibi Shen Shen's effect activates in the graveyard, banishing Durbaran to Fleur and Token Collector to summon itself back. True King of All Calamities will remove a unit and declare light. Virtual World John Wu's effect will activate in the graveyard, banishing itself, adding or special summoning Lili. And sending away Lulu. Lulu and Lili will be banished to make Vermilion Dragon Mech. Vermilion Dragon Drake will attempt to destroy Dengirsu. Dengirsu uses its own effect to prevent its destruction. Which will chain Virtual Gate Quinlong. Which will chain into Gizmek Orochi. Orochi will be negated by Called by the Grave. Dingears' effect is negated for the rest of the turn. True King of All Calamities attempts to swing. QB returns one monster from the Banish Zone. True King swings over the Dingirsu. Shen Shen swings direct, as does Gamma Seal, QB, and Vermilion Dragon for game. Unfortunately for the Grand Maju player, the Virtual World just had too big of a board to break. And we never even found out what his two back row were. We have an Exo Sister deck. They summon Irene, activate Exo Sister packs, adding Sophia to hand. Sophia is then summoned. They will use Sophia's effect to draw one card. Irene's effect will activate, sending the Exo Sister hand back and draw one card, which will be Windwitch Snowbell. Irene and Sophia will be overlaid into Michaelis. Michaelis will use her effect to add an Exo Sister spell a trap. They will set Exo Sister Vadis in Ice Dragon's prison. And pass turn. 
opponent summons Fallen of Albaz, pitches one to fuse using both players' boards. They make Titanoclad, the Ash Dragon. Titanoclad gains attack points. They activate Despia Theater of the Branded and Dragon Maid Changeover, fusing their Titanoclad with Dragon Maid Lorepar to make Dragon Maid Shale. They now have an Omni to get on board. They activate the effect of Tidying, banishing itself. Their opponent will chain Exosister Vadis, which Dragon Maid Shale will chain to negate. Then they'll activate Ice Dragon's Prison. Targeting Lorepart. Ice Dragon's Prison resolves, summoning Lorepart to their side of the field. And then banishing Shao. Shao will still negate Vadis. And Dragon Maid Tidying will resolve. Er. Hang on. It will not resolve because Tidying's target was, I believe, removed by the Ice Dragon's Prison. Titanic Cloud will attempt to activate its effect, which is... Da -da 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 -da. Add your hand special summon Dogmatica or Fallen of Albaz, which will be negated by the opponent's Ash Blossom. Pass his turn. They draw a Monster Reborn. The opponent activates Laundry Trap. Once per chain, if a monster is normal or special summoned to your field, you can send the top card of your deck to the graveyard. If this card is sent from the deck to the graveyard by a card effect, you can target one card in your graveyard that was sent there this turn, except this card, add it to your hand. But until the end phase, after next turn resolves, you cannot activate cards or effects with its name. You can only use this effective laundry trap once per turn. The player will set an Ice Dragon's Prison and pass. Opponent sets one and passes. They draw another Exosister Vadis, which will set and pass. Opponent draws Kitchen Dragon Maid, which will chain Laundry Trap. Kitchen Dragon Maid will add Tin Kek to hand, and then discard it. Laundry Trap will mill one, which is Branded Opening. Kitchen Maid will attempt to attack. They'll chain Ice Dragon's Prison, which the opponent will chain Dragon Maid Tidying. Tidying will return Kitchen Dragon Maid to hand, and Mr. Mons Vadis, and Ice Dragon's Prison will summon Tinkek. Dragon Maid Tidying is effectively activating the grave, banishing itself to Special Summon Kitchen, which will then chain the Laundry Trap again. At a Ernest. Which is then discarded. Laundry Trap mills one, which is Nurse. They set Vadis. They swing over Kitchen with Tin Kek. Main phase two, they set their Called by and pass. They summon Laundry Dragon Maid, which will trigger Laundry Trap. Sends the top three and four, which will trigger Despian Tragedy and Dragon Maid Welcome. And they'll chain Exosister Vadis. Which they'll summon Stella and Ellis. They add an Alibird to the Jesper, of, Jesper of Despia to hand. They use Changeover, bouncing it back to the hand by bouncing Laundry Dragon Maid. Because he moved cards from the graveyard, this will allow him to use his Exosisters as one material XZ summons. They use Stella to make a new Michaelis. And Ellis will make an Asophiel. Asophiel and Michaelis' on summons will activate. Michaelis' effective banish will get rid of Despia Theater of the Branded. And Asophiel's will just prevent cards from doing something from the graveyard. And it passes turn. They use Michaelis' effect to add an Exosister Spell Trap, which will be Exosister Arment. They go in battle phase, they swing with all three monsters. Despia Dragonmaid is down to 700. They set Exosister Arment and pass turn. They summon Laundry Dragon Maid, triggers that itself and trap to mill four.
Decorate branded opening. Which they will chain an Ash Blossom to negate. Enter the battle phase. Laundry Maid will, Laundry Dragon Maid will attempt to use this effect for Dragon Maid bouncing for a bigger Dragon Maid, but they will call by the other one in the grave to negate this effect. They accept their defeat by swinging headlong into Tin Kek. And we'll move on to the next one. All right, unfortunately, we're watching a Sword Soul player. They summon Mo Ye, they reveal Taya. Their opponent chains Max C. I hope the Sword Soul player loses. They get their sword token. They sink off. They make Draco Berserker. That's not how you're supposed to start that. Mo Ye will add Ash Blossom to hand. Hang on a second. Yeah, he could have kept going. He was supposed to make Shishao to get Long Yon. Long Yon would summon itself, get a token, which would have gotten him Baron de Floor. Instead, he just has Draco Berserker. Opponent activates Resonator Call, which will chain Ash Blossom to negate. Lock to infinite impermanence to negate Draco Berserker's effect. Summon Red Resonator. Berserker's effect is negated, so this will do nothing but start a chain. Resonator goes off to summon Red Familiar. Red Familiar and Red Resonator make Red Rising Dragon. On summon, Red Rising's effect will activate to summon back Red Resonator, which its effect will activate again to gain life points. And he will then make Scarlight Red Dragon Archfiend. He used Scarlet's effect to just immediately destroy Draco Berserker. Then I'll special summon a Synchron Resonator, which will sync with Scarlight to make Hot Red Dragon Archfiend Abyss. Scarlet Resonator effect will activate to return Red Resonator to the hand. He will set one back row and swing for 3200. This will activate Hot Red Dragon Abyss effect to summon out Synchron Resonator again. And now he will pass turn. Opponent activates Feather Duster. Hot Red Dragon will negate that. It's unfortunate. He should have saved that. Because now his opponent can start doing the Sword Soul things. He summons Taya, banishes Berserker of the Tenny to get the Sword Soul token, which makes Ad Emancipator Risen Dragite. He will chain Solemn Warning to that which will destroy it, and then his opponent activates Fusion Destiny, sending Dasher and Celestial to summon Destroyer Phoenix Enforcer. Destroy Phoenix Enforcer uses its effect to destroy itself and Hot Red Dragon Archfiend Abyss. Destroy Phoenix Enforcer uses its effect in the graveyard to return itself during the next standby phase. Phoenix Enforcer summons itself. Player summons Red Resonator, activates its effect, opponent activates Max C, in response to Red Resonator. No response. Red Resonator summons Red Resonator. Red Resonator will increase his life points by an amount equal to destroy Phoenix Force's attack points, which is 2,500. During the end phase, destroy Phoenix Force will destroy itself and Red Resonator. During the stamina phase, he'll activate Dash's effect to summon the Tenyi Spirit Ashun he just drew and summon back destroy Phoenix Enforcer by its own effect. He will tribute Tenny Spirit Ajuna to summon Cyframe Driver, then use Tenny Spirit Ajuna's effect to banish itself to bring out Tenny Spirit Adhara. Tenny Spirit Adhara and Cyframe Driver will be synced off into Yazi, Evil of the Yang Zing. Yazi's effect will activate, destroying itself and the Synchron Resonator his opponent controls. Synchron Resonator effect will activate in the graveyard, targeting Red Resonator. Red Resonator is returned to the hand. Yazi summons Sword Soul of Taya. Sword Soul of Taya will banish Moye to summon another Sword Soul token. 
Teddy Spirit Adhara will banish itself, targeting Draco Berserker to return that to the extra deck. Then he will make Sword Soul Grandmaster Tishao using Sword Soul Taya and Token. Using Tishao, he will chain itself and the Taya to the gra that was sent to the graveyard as material. Taya will send a Moye to the graveyard. Tishao will add the Iris Sword Soul to hand. Phoenix Enforcer will swing over Red Resonator. Tishao will swing direct. It's going to take a miracle to get him out of this one. Player summons Red Resonator, activates effect. Player chains another Maxi to it. You hate to see it, sports fans. He will summon another Red Resonator, which will increase his life points, targeting Chishao. He will then summon a monster that's immediately destroyed by Phoenix Enforcer. Chishao will activate its effect for no good reason other than to banish a monster. Phoenix Enforcer brings itself back. Player summons Incredible Ecclesia, sends her to the graveyard to summon Sword Soul Moye. Moye reveres Iris Sword Soul, creating another token for free because one card sync for summons are fair. Makes Crimson Blader. Moye's effect in the grave will activate to add Chishao to hand. Sorry, to add Long Wand to hand. Chishao will banish Moye to negate the effect of a Red Resonator. And Monster's effect is negated so he can summon Iris Sword Soul. Activates Monster Reborn, targeting his opponent's Hot Red Dragon Archfiend Abyss. It just keeps getting worse. Crimson Blader swings over Red Resonator. Its effect activates. Archfiend Abyss swings over Red Resonator. Chishao swings direct. Iris swings direct. And Destroyer Phoenix Enforcer swings direct. The way the Archfiend player could have won is when he, his opponent activated Feather Duster, let it go through, he loses the Solemn, then when his opponent activates Fusion Destiny, he negate that. Unfortunately, he had no way of knowing what his opponent's hand was. The most inspiring part of that duel was watching a Sword Soul player not go for a turn one Baron Chishao. So there's some originality amongst them. And here we have a Reptile player. To activate the effect of Nunu, sending itself to the graveyard, which will chain the opponent's max C. Max C will resolve. Nunu will also send in Zoha. They will summon a Nayu, which will chain a Kagoto Kage. Kagoto Kage will then summon itself. His opponent will draw a card. Nayu will add Ogdotic Water Lily. Kagoto Kage and Nayu will make Predator Plant for Anaconda. Vert will use his effect, send his fusion destiny to make Phoenix Enforcer. His opponent drew quite a few cards off that maxi. Activates infinite impermanence. Phoenix Enforcer will chain to the infinite imperm. Destroying Vert and Imperm. Imperm's effect will still resolve. You'll then summon Planet Pathfinder and tribute it for a Numeron Network. I can already tell this is over. He's going for the Numeron combo. He sends Numeron Calling, which will summon each of the gates. The gates will go into battle and use their effects. They can't be... They will just double their own attack points. He even has a limiter removal to speed it up. Destroy Phoenix and Force to change his effect when it's destroyed. The gates attack becomes 8,000. He swings for game. Ba-boom. Much shorter match than the last one. But let's move on to the next one. Another Sword Soul player. They're such a rare breed these days. A uh, player will summon Jory Punk Madam Spider using its effect to add Jory Punk Dangerous Gabu to hand. Activate Foolish Burial to send away Orcrest Harp Horror. Harp Horror's effect will activate, banishing itself. Player will chain a Max C. 
player chains the max C with an Ash Blossom to negate the max C. Harpoor resolves uninterrupted. They summon a Gearsu, Orcus Mech Knight, which will send Orcus Nightmare to the graveyard. Madam Spider and Gearsu will make Galatea the Orcus Automaton. Orcus Nightmare's effect will activate in the graveyard, banishing itself, sending away Orcus Symbol Skeleton. Symbol Skeleton will banish itself, targeting Gearsu, summoning it back. Galatea's effect will activate, returning Harpoor to the deck, and setting Orchestrated Return, which will then be activated. Orchestrated Return will send away Gearsu to let him draw two. Activates Fusion Destiny, summoning Destroyer Phoenix Enforcer. Sets two back row. Passes turn. Player draws long one. They summon Incredible Ecclesia, special summon because opponent has monsters, and they send it away to activate its effect, which will chain a called by the grave to negate. Player will activate Long Wand's effect, discarding another Long Wand to summon itself and get a token. This will chain Destroy Phoenix Enforcer to destroy Long Wand. Player activates Sword Soul Emergence, adding a Moye to hand. They summon Moye. Moye reveals Taya, getting another token. They're going to sink off into Grandmaster Chishao. Chishao activates effect and as will Moye which will chain into Jory Punk Dangerous Gabu to negate Chishao's effect. Moye's effect will add another Moye to hand, or let him draw a card, which is another Moye, and will negate Chishao, preventing him from getting another long one. So there's still a hope for the Punk Orcus player. Destroy a Phoenix Enforcer brings itself back. They activate Foxy Toon's effect, sending itself to summon Zayamin. Destiny Hero Denier in the grave will summon itself. And return Destiny Hero Celestial to the deck. Zayamin will activate its effect, paying life points to add Foxy Toon to hand. Foxy Toon loses its effect, tributing the Zayamin to summon itself. His monsters are boosted up, and he's going to swing over Chishao with Foxy Toon. Foxy Toon's effect will activate, increasing his life points by the attack power of Chishao. Denier will take out the token and destroy Phoenix Force and will swing direct. Foxy 2 and Denier will make Artifact Dagda. And it will pass to the opponent's turn. They draw Sword Soul Taya. They summon Moye and attempt to activate its effect, revealing Taya. They chain Call by the Grave, targeting the Moye in the graveyard already, negating it, and chain Artifact Dagda to the Called by the Grave. Artifact Dagda will set Artifact Scythe. Called by the Grave will banish the Moye. Moye's effect is negated. He does not get a token yet. Player ends the turn. Destroy, or Scythe is destroyed and then summoned. Dasher will use its effect to special summon the Zayamin he just drew. Main phase one, Dagda and Zayamin will link to McNightmare Unicorn. Nightmare Unicorn and Scythe will make access code talker. And this is going to be the end. Access code talker will boost attack points by 3,000 for Nightmare Unicorn. It will banish Dagda to destroy Moye and then swing for game. I'm impressed by that player being able to come out on top over Sword Soul. Nice to see people are doing stuff with Punk before Deer Note comes out. Hey, no pal gal. Thanks for watching the stream. That was a hard shutdown of the Sword Soul. Alright, we have a King of the Skull Servants deck. They summon Glow Up Bulb and we'll link it off into Link Karibo. This will trigger Glow Up Bulb's effect because it was sent to the graveyard. It'll banish itself to add Vampire Fraulein. They will set their called by the grave and pass turn. The opponent will summon Balancer Lord. 
which will summon an Armored Bitron. They'll chain Ash Blossom to Armored Bitron's effect, tributing itself to negate. Bitron's effect does not resolve. Player sets one back row. Attempts to swing with Balancer Lord, which will trigger the special summoning of Vampire Fraulein. Link Karibo is destroyed. They draw another glow up bulb for turn. They will summon and send it and Vampire Fraulein away to make Wee Witch's Apprentice. Player will activate Solemn Judgment in response to the summoning of the witch. She is destroyed. Wee Witch's effect will activate when she's sent to the graveyard, targeting Vampire Fraulein. Glow Up Bloom will also activate its effect, banishing itself. But that's going to be negated by his opponent's Ash Blossom. Vampire Fraulein has returned to the hand. And they will pass turn. Player summons Widget Kid and activates effect. Special summon Cyber's White Hat. Balancer Lord and Widget Kid will then be linked off to make Splash Mage. Well, if that's what you're looking for, No Pal Gal, you came to the right place. Every Monday, like clockwork, and as much as it will come out sometime on Monday, I make watch and learn videos of Master Duel that just goes into spectate, watches, and comments on what's happening. Speaking of what's happening... Player use Splash Maze effect to target Balancer Lord to attempt to bring it back. The opponent activate called by the grave, targeting Balancer Lord to banish it so that there was no target. Then the player used Cybers White Hat and Splash Mage to summon Transcode Talker. Transcode Talker is going to use its effect to bring back Splash Mage. Both of those will then be linked off to May. Is it who I think it is? It's... No, it's Firewall Dragon, actually. Firewall will attempt to swing direct. The opponent will summon Vampire Fraulein. Fraulein will use her own effect to pay life points to boost her defense to be able to survive Firewall Dragon's attack. Player draws White Prince. They summon White Prince and use Link Karibo's effect to summon itself by tributing White Prince. White Prince will then send cards to the graveyard, which are Skull Servant and Lady in White. White Prince effect in the graveyard will activate to banish the Lady in White itself and Skull Servant to special summon King of the Skull Servants. White Mare will activate its effect to target a banished Skull Servant or White Mare and return it to the graveyard by discarding itself. This will boost King of the Skull Servants up to 2,000 attack points. The King of the Skull Servants will attack into Firewall Dragon, and Vampire Fraulein will pay life points to make King of the Skull Servants stronger than Firewall Dragon. He will then link his monsters off to make Nightmare Unicorn. He will use Nightmare Unicorn's effect, discarding his King of the Skull Servants to get rid of his opponent's Armored Bitron, which will ban itself because it was brought back from the graveyard. Player draws for the turn, and it's Raigeki to clear the board. Pass his turn. Both players are playing fully off the top now. Player draws Gozuki. Summons Gozuki, activates its effect to send a White Baking to the graveyard. White Baking will add White Prince to the hand, and a White Mare, and then discard White Prince to activate its effect to send a Skull Servant Lady in White. White Prince will banish itself and Skull Servant and Lady in White again. Special summon a new King of the Skull Servants at 7,000 attack points now. King of the Skull Servants will swing for game. Two very off meta decks going head to head. Entertaining to watch. I feel like there are more off meta decks that show up earlier in the day. Because I was doing a lot of plays last night, and I was just running into Sword Soul after Sword Soul, which got really annoying really quick. We have an Exo Sister player going up against his opponent, who I don't know what. They set one back row and pass. Player draws Exo Sister Vodis for the turn, activates Exo Sister Pax. Opponent will chain Ash Blossom to negate the draw. Or negate the adding to hand of, more rather. Player sets Vadis, Dogmatica Punishment, and Cross Out Designator, passes turn. Duels B summons Sword Soul Moye and reveals Taya to get themselves a token. Duels A activates Dogmatica Punishment, targeting Sword Soul and Moye. They send Titanoclad to destroy Moye. Moye's effect will still go off to get the token. Duels B will pass turn. Titanoclad's effect will attempt to activate, but will be negated by called by from the grave. Or called by the grave. But the call by the grave will be negated by cross out designator.
Titanic Cloud's effect will activate to summon Dogmatica Ecclesia the Virtuous, who will add another Dogmatica Punishment to hand. Player will summon Ellis, swing both monsters. Yeah, the games are a lot more entertaining when they go longer than someone bricked or someone was fully locked out turn one or worse, one of those turn one finisher games. Okay. Player activates Pot of Desires, banishing 10 to draw two. Summon Taya, remove threats from the graveyard, which will summon Exorcist Michaelis, allowing the Exorcist to summon itself as material. Which will use its effect to banish Sword Saltaya. Player will chain a Triple Tactics Talent because the opponent activated a card on his turn, which will allow him to take control of Michaelis. Then we'll activate Sword Soul Emergence. Emergence will add Long Wand to hand. Long Wand's effect will activate, pitching Sword Soul Emergence to summon himself and another token. Player activates Dogmatic Punishment, immediately destroying Long Wand again. The apprehended Michaelis will swing into Dogmatica. And do damage. During the end phase, Dogmatica is banished. Switches turns. Player leaves Mikhail's effect to add Exorcist or Pax to hand. They'll activate Pax to add Sophia to hand. They will summon Sophia using her effect to draw one. They activate Ellis's effect to summon herself. Then activate Dogmatica Fleur de Lis effect to summon itself. Sophia will swing over a token, as will Michaelis. And then Fleur de Lee will swing direct for 2,500. Player sets a solemn judgment and passes turn. Opponent activates Feather Duster, which is going to be negated by solemn judgment. Sword Soul player passes turn. The draw goes in match. Doesn't particularly matter. They use Sophia's effect to draw a card. Swing with Michaelis, and with Fleur de Lee for game. Exo Sister wins out over Sword Soul due to well timed Dogmatica punishments. Good for them. I vaguely know this deck. It's an incantation ritual, but their ritual monster is a Morphicator Pain, the Imagination Drake Overlord. I have never seen this card before. Uh, you can know ritual summon this card with Amorphous Persona. If it's ritual summoned, your opponent skips their next main phase one. That's a strong move. Negate the effects of face up fusion, synchro, or index these monsters while they're on the field. This card is sent from the field to the graveyard. You can add one Drake Overlord monster from your deck to your hand. Except Amorphosator Pain, the Imagination Drake Overlord. It's eight stars, as is Zaborg. He has Incantation Inception. But it's the opponent's turn, so they're going to activate Pot of Desires, banishing 10 to draw two. Tenny Spirit Ajuna. Using its effect, summon itself. They normal summon Ash Blossom, which means they have a second one. To make Ferron de Fleur. Ferron de Fleur is on board. They set one back row. Pass turn. They draw Max C, activates Forbidden Droplet, getting rid of Max C to negate Ferran de Fleur's effect, activate Melody of Awakening to get rid of Enemy of Crusader Pain, to draw two Blue Eyes Chaos Max Dragons, and pass the turn. Ferran de Fleur will use its effect to destroy the set Incantation Inception. They will summon Sword Saltaya, activates effect, banishing Tenny Spirit Ajuna, getting a token. They make Chishao. They have 5,800 on board, nothing blocking them. They add Long Wand to hand. Long Wand will activate his effect. Pitching Sword Soul Taya, summon himself, getting a token. They make Sword Soul Supreme Sovereign Chen Ying. They have 99 on board. Long Wand does its effect damage for being used as Synchro Material. They swing with monsters for game. I was really hoping I would have seen more out of the ritual deck. Weird moves he made. Alright, not 
quite sure what this guy's playing. Max C, Lord of Heavenly Prisons, Inferno Tempest, Triple Tactics, and Card of Demise. They'll activate Max C, unprompted. They'll activate Card of Demise, drawing infinite permanence and double-edged sword. They will set both of them and pass turn. Lord of Heavenly Prisons is banished. Opponent sets three. Summon Samurai Skull, which will send Vampire Retainer away. And activate Vampire's Desire in response, targeting Samurai Skull. I need to rewind real quick because I lost track of the plot. Vampire's Desire. Desire. Activate one of these effects. Target one face-up monster you control. Send one vampire monster from your deck to the graveyard with a different level from that monster. And if you do, the target monster becomes a level of ascent. So they change Samurai Retainer to level one. Um, honestly, I don't think ritual decks are viable in higher ranks. I have a ritual deck using Demise and Ruin, but it's more of a meme deck, really, and it's super dependent on really good openers and your opponent bricking. I'm sure there are other ritual monsters that are better. Actually, there is one ritual deck that's pretty much tier zero, which is the Herald of Ultimateness with the Drytron engine, because that deck's been top tier ever since this game was released. Just sets up a really strong board and negates and prevents your opponent from really doing anything using Herald of Ultimateness. And there's also other people who are few and far between who play Drytrons the way they're supposed to be played, as pure Drytrons. When I say the way they're supposed to be played, it's really more efficient with Herald, but yeah, Herald of Ultimateness and Drytron Dracondis are perfectly viable high-end ritual decks, especially the Herald one. So Vampire Desires turns Samurai Skull to level 1 by sending Vampire Familiar to the graveyard. Vampire Retainer's effect activates. Hmm... They sent Vampire Frowl into the graveyard to summon itself. Then they activate, which added Vampire's Domain to their hand. They activate Vampire's Domain. Pay 500 and send itself away to bring back Vampire Familiar. Vampire Familiar will add Vampire Voivode to hand. Vampire Voivode will summon itself by tributing Familiar and Retainer. Voivode will target Lord of Heavenly Prison in his opponent's graveyard and summon it to his side of the field. Voivode and Samurai Skull will both swing. The vampire deck might be a fun gimmick. Zombie decks are efficient enough in their own right just because of zombie world being so strong. Player draws card Demise, attempts to activate it. Opponent will chain Vampire Awakening, which will summon Shadow Vampire. Player draws three, activates Dark World Dealings, then activates Double Edged Sword, targeting Lord of Heavenly Prison. Mm. Both players take any battle damage from battles involving the Equip Monster. If you take this and more battle damage, send this card to the graveyard. Player will chain Vampire Domination to the effect, which is when a spell trap is activated, if you control a Vampire Monster, negate the activation, destroy that card, then if it was a Monster card, gain life points equal to original attack. So an Omni Negate for having a Vampire on board. Not bad. Double-edged sword accomplishes nothing. Player summons Grin Maju, swings it into Lord Heavenly Prison. Activates Inferno Tempest because they took more than 3,000 damage. Banishes a bunch of monsters, which is going to trigger off the effects of Necroface. Three Necrofaces. He got really lucky with that mill, which is going to mill more. Necroface mills even more. Necroface mills again. His opponent does not have any cards to draw at the start of their turn. Which means they lose. Huh. What a turnaround. The Grand Maju player got really lucky with all three of their Necrofaces being banished. But I think they had already gotten it off when the second one resolved, so even still, that was impressive and horrifying. Ah, Attic Mister. Unfortunately, they have two Ash Blossoms in hand, which is a bit of a brick. Going against Live Twin, opponent activates Secret Password, add Live Twin's Sunny Snitch to hand. Sunny Snitch will activate, adding Live Twin Little Law to hand, not negating it with Ash Blossom. They summon Lula. Now they're going to use Ash Blossom to negate Lula's summoning of a 
Uh, kiss kill. Set two back row and pass. There's the Ignister turn player. They summon Aichi Ignister. Its effect activates, but it's going to be negated by an Ash Blossom. Turn player does not negate the Ash Blossom if they're called by. They send away the Aichi Ignister and summon Dark Infant Ignister. Dark Infant add Ignister will add Ignister Island to hand. Island will activate. Opponent will chain True Jaco Apocalypse. What is that doing in the live twin deck? Uh, this card sends a spell trap. You can target a monster in the field, destroy it. You cannot activate the following effects of True Jaco once per turn. If you target one other True Jaco or two king card you control, destroy it. That's not relevant. During your opponent's main phase, you can mean after this effect resolves. Trip someone one True Jaco or True King monster face up. Weird. Island will activate. Player will chain True King's return. Which will activate True Draco Apocalypse. Draco Apocalypse will destroy True King's Return. Player will special summon Picari Adagnister. Activate the effect in the grave of True King's Return. Uh, da, 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 da. Yeah, so its effect would be to target one monster off the field and destroy it. Player is going to chain. Targeting Dark Infant. Player will chain called by the grave. Now banishing an Ash Blossom, so everything is happening terribly out of order. Ash Blossom is negated, but it's already resolved, so it doesn't matter. Dark Infant Adagnister is destroyed. And player gets to draw when I meet you. Picari Adagnister will link up into another Dark Infant Adagnister. Then activate I Meet You, revealing Dark Templar Adagnister to add Doyon Adagnister. Ignister Island will effectively activate to summon Doyon. Doyon will return your Dark Infant Ignister in his graveyard to the deck. Then Doyon and Dark Infant will be linked up into Cyber's Wicked. Doyon's effect will activate, returning I Meet You to the hand. Add Ignister will allow him to special summon Aichi Add Ignister. He will banish the Dark Infant in his graveyard to add Buru Add Ignister to his hand. Cyber's Wicked and Aichi will make a Splash Mage. Adagnister will under summon Buru. Buru will meal a Gachir Adagnister. Splash Mage will bring back Picari Adagnister. Picari and Buru will make Wind Pegasus Adagnister. Buru's effect will activate for being sent to the graveyard, which will summon back Picari. Then Picari and the Pegasus will make Update Jammer. Splash Mage and Update Jammer will make Access Code Talker. And because Access Code Talker was made using Update Jammer, it is allowed to attack twice per turn. Access Code Talker will also boost its attack points, targeting Update Jammer, making itself a 4300. They use its effect to banish Wicked to destroy the Lil Law on the field. Swing once for 43, swing a second time for another 43. I really want to know what that evil twin player was doing with True Draco in their deck. That's some funky stuff to throw together. Alright, we have an Eldritch player. Another one you love to see. Opponent immediately activates Fusion Destiny, sending away Dasher and Celestial to make Phoenix Enforcer. And they pass turn. Player draws Ice Dragon's Prison, uses Eldritch the Golden Lord, sending itself away to send away Destroy Phoenix Enforcer and their Scarlet Sanguine. They set every card in their hand. They send away Hakero from the field to the graveyard, to add Eldritch back to hand, and then summon a zombie which is Eldritch. Eldritch is a 3,500 body. It swings for direct. Aquero will activate in the grave, banishing itself to set another Scarlet Sanguine. Scarlet Sanguine. Dash will use its effect to special summon the generator boss Mardell that he just drew. Mardell allows him to draw another card, which will be a Lopter, Shadow of the Generator Bosses. 
Lobster will summon itself, or is summoned, then use its own effect to tribute itself. Player Chain's Summon Limit. Which means he has reached his summons for the turn. Activates Eldritch of Scarlet Sanguine. Which is summoning another Eldritch the Golden Lord from the deck. Draws a Solemn Strike. Goes into battle. One Eldritch destroys Mardell. The other one swings direct. Then he activates Ice Dragon's Prison. To resurrect, destroy Phoenix Enforcer on his own side of the field. And we'll swing direct with that. Oof. Eldritch will do what it does. All too well. Unfortunately, with no back row removal, or even trying to remove the back row, the generator player could not do anything. Yeah, using his own Destroy Phoenix Enforcer is just salt in the wound. We have a Dark World player. I love Dark World. Simple. Activates Dark World Dealings to draw one. And they'll discard Brow, which allows them to draw another card. Then activate Allure of Darkness to draw two. They'll banish the Hunt or the Beige from their hand. They will set Dark Scheme and Gateway to Dark World. Opponent activates Sekka's Light. If they have no spell traps in the graveyard, draw two. They'll then banish it. To reveal Super Heavy Samurai Battle Ball, return cards to the hand. Super Heavy Samurai Wagon will equip itself to Battle Ball. Or er, no, that is not what's happening. They revealed Battle Ball, they return it to the deck, they drew a new card. Super Heavy Samurai Wagon was summoned, then turned defense mode automatically. Super Heavy Samurai Soul Piercer used its effect to equip itself to Samurai Wagon, which then turned it to attack mode. They added a Samurai Soul Piercer to their hand then. Then use the effective infant track Brutal Dozer, tributing the Samurai Wagon to summon itself, which is chained into the Soul Piercer's effect. Soul Piercer allows him to add Samurai Trumpeter to the hand, and Brutal Dozer will summon infant track Tunneler. Tunneler and Brutal Dozer will make infinite track River Stormer. River Storm will activate its effect, removing a unit to add Super Express Bullet Train to hand. Bullet Train's effect will activate to summon itself. And then they'll summon Super Heavy Samurai Trumpeter. And Super Heavy Samurai Thief. Thief will tribute itself to destroy one's opponent's back row. Soul Pace Brink's effect will activate. Getting on a Trumpeter, then destroying Trumpeter, sending them away to make Samurai Scarecrow. Scarecrow will discard Blue Brawler to special summon back Samurai Soul Piercer. Attempts to swing with River Stormer. Activates Gateward Dark World to bring back the Brow Huntsman. Uses Dark Honest to make his both monster lose attack points, so Brow survives the one hit. Then the Bullet Train will swing over Brow. Player draws for turn. Activates Pot of Extravagance. Banishing six to draw two. Activates Raigeki, clearing his opponent's board. Soul Piercer's effect will activate to add Samurai Giga Gloves to hand. They summon Dark Spirit of Malice and swing for 16. During the end phase, Super Express Bullet Train will return Samurai Trumpeter to his hand. It is the Samurai player's turn. They summon Giga Gloves and send it off to make a new Samurai Scarecrow. Get Gloves Effect will activate to order the, the cards, then activate Sekka's Light to draw those cards. Banish Sekka's Light, reveal Fairy Tail Snow, return it to the deck, and draw a card. They summon Orbital Hydrolander by its own effect, banishing Infinite Track Tunneler, which will then return a bunch of Super Heavy Samurais to the great to the deck, allowing them to draw two. Grand Soil is summoned, Infinite Track River Stormer is summoned, which will destroy his opponent's monster. Then Samurai Trumpeter is on field. He has enough on board to swing for game. We should just with Hydrolander, Grand Soil, and River Stormer. Sky Striker player. 
versus Sword Soul. I'm not really rooting for anyone here. Sword Soul emerges, activates to add Moye to hand. Moye is summoned, which will activate its effect, revealing Arch Nemesis Protoss. Summons a token. They make Chishao. Moye will chain into Chishao's effect. Moye lets him draw. Chishao will add Sword Soul Sacred Summit to hand. Long Wan will activate effect. Discarding Taya to summon itself in a token. If there's one thing to say positive about Sword Soul, it's consistent. They make Baron de Fleur. Long Wan deals 1200. They activate Sword Soul Sacred Summit, which will summon back to Taya from the graveyard. Taya will then banish Moye to summon a token. Make Adam Emancipator, Risen Dragite. They can now negate a spell card, I believe, because they have water type monsters in the graveyard. Uh, when your opponent activates a spell trap card, well, there's a water monster in your graveyard, which Mo Ye is. You can negate the activation and destroy it. So that's why they're Ren Dragite. Dragite will also, for fun, look at the top five of this deck. Archimus's Protoss will special summon itself by banishing other monsters and declared Dark. From a banishing lots of three monsters with different attributes from your graveyard or face of field, can't be destroyed by card effects. You can clear one attribute on the field, destroy all monsters on the field with that attribute. Also, until the next turn, neither player can special summon monsters with that attribute. So his opponent cannot even special summon Ray. Hard shutdown of the Sky Striker. Activates Pot of Desires. He allows it to go through. Activates Sky Striker Mecha Modules. Multi roll. Baron de Fleur will negate that. Then they activate Sky Striker Mobilize Engage to add Afterburners to hand. They activate Afterburners, and it destroys Dragite. And let me just check. Yep, in summoning Arch Nemesis Protoss, they got rid of the Water Monster in the Graveyard, so Dragite lost its negation. Then activate Mobilize Engage again, adding a Max C to hand. Then activate Lightning Storm, destroying all attacks from the monster opponent controls. They summon Ray. They send her away to summon Hayate. So they can't special summon dark monsters, so they can't make Zeke. Go into battle phase, Hayate swings direct for 15. Hayate uses its effect to send Hornet drones to the graveyard. During main phase 2, Hayate will turn to Kagari. Kagari's effect will activate, returning mobilized engage to their hand. Then they activate Shark Cannon. Which will summon the opponent's Baron de Fleur onto their side of the field. They'll attempt to use Arch Nemesis Protoss effect to declare wind to get rid of Bron de Fleur. Bron de Fleur will chain its negation to destroy Protoss. Or just negation, I guess. Yep, because Protoss cannot be destroyed by card effects, so Bron de Fleur can only negate, not destroy. Protoss will swing over Kagari. That will chain Ray's effect, summoning her. Ray will then tribute herself to summon out Shizuku. Shizuku summon will trigger Rose's effect to summon herself, which will add an area zero to hand. Shizuku's effect will add area zero. Player draws a Feather Duster, which is a great one off the top to deal with his opponent's back row. One of which is Sword Soul Blackout, which will target Protoss, Shizuku, and Baron de Fleur. He will chain that into a Sky Striker into a Called by the Grave to get rid of Ray. Sword Soul Blackout will get rid of all the monsters. We'll get rid of the two monsters targeted. And ultimately, Harpy's Feather Duster does nothing. Sky Striker Ace Rose will then be linked off into Hayate. They activate Mobilize Engage to add a Afterburns to the hand and an Ash Blossom. They summon Ash Blossom and link off into Pristron Halky Fibrex. Halky Fibrex effect will go off to summon Effect Bailer. Effect Bale and Halky Fibrex will be linked off into Selene, Queen of the Master Magicians. She gets 12 spell counters. She'll remove 3 to summon back Effect Bailer. And then they will link off into Access Code Talker. Access Code Talker will boost its attack points by 3,000 and will swing over Protoss. 
Sword Soul player is playing off the top with one in hand already. Sky Striker player has four. Let's go. Sword Soul activates Tenny Spirit of Juna. To attempt to summon itself, player will chain Max C. No response, the Max C will resolve. Ashuna will summon itself. And we'll link off into Monk of the Tenyi. Player activates Sword Soul Emergence to add a Sword Soul Taya to their hand. They summon Taya, activating its effect, banishing Sword Soul Blackout to get themselves a Sword Soul token. Sword Soul Blackout in the grave in the banished zone will allow them to summon another Sword Soul token. They will make Bashia, Brightness of the Yangzing. Bashia's effect will activate, targeting access code Talker, and will chain into Sword Soul of Taiye. Sword Soul Taiye will send away Tiny Spirit Vishuda, and access code Talker is returned to the extra deck. Tiny Spirit Vishuda's effect will activate, banishing itself to summon Vishuda. Player will swing with Monk of the Tenyi and Bashia. Bashia will destroy Vishuda to summon back a Taya. Taya will link with will sync with the sword stuff we still have to make another Chishao. Chishao's effect will activate, or attempt to activate, but the Ash Blossom that was just drawn will negate it. Player ends turn. And just looking at the Raigeki in their hand, I know they're in a pretty good spot. They activate Rageki, wiping out the opponent's board completely. Strashtricker Ace Rose, effect will activate to summon herself back from the grave, and will link off immediately into Shizuku. Player will activate Monster Reborn, targeting Veranda Fleur again. Resurrecting it to their field from the second time. They summon Rei. They swing with Rei. They swing with Shizuku. And with the opponent's own Veranda Fleur. That was a more engaging back and forth than I usually see. And another Sword Soul player. I think I have to take back what I said earlier about there being more deck variety earlier in the day. Activate Sword Soul Emergence to add Long Wand to hand. They summon Moye. They reveal the Long Wand they just added to get a token. Long Wand's effect will inactivate, pitching Moye to summon itself and another token. They will link off into Draco Berserker of the Tenyi. Moye's effect will activate in the graveyard. Opponent will chain a Nibiru to that. Draco Berserker will chain to Nibiru to negate it and banish it. No, just to banish it. It will still resolve. But there's no monsters on the board. So... Everyone's just cleared. Player activates Monster Reborn to summon his opponents, Draco Berserker. Then activates Fusion Deployment, revealing a Cyber End Dragon and summoning a Cyber Dragon. Swings with both monsters. Passes turn. Player draws Tiny Spirit of Shuna for turn, activates Rageki, clears the board, activates Shuna's effect to summon itself, passes turn. Note to all potential Sword Soul players out there, because I'm going to give a bit of free advice. Uh, make sure that before you do your. If you're going to be doing the Sword Soul thing, Make Baron de Fleur first so that you have a negation on board if you're going to summon all your stuff at once like that. Because that would have prevented the Nibiru from going off. Player summons Incredible Ecclesia, activates her effect, sending her away to summon out Sword Soul of Taya. Taya will banish Moye to create a token. When they will sink off into Chishao. Taya's effect will activate. Sending Nahada to the grave. They will swing with Chishao, who will activate opponent will activate Mirror Force. They will activate Chishao's effect, banishing emergence, targeting Tiny Spirit of Juna. And the effect will increase the Juna's effect until the end of the turn, and then restore it. Opponent activates Galaxy Soldier's effect, pitching Cyber Dragon Hers to summon Galaxy Soldier. 
Savage Dragon Herd's effect will activate for being sent to the graveyard. This will add a Cyber Dragon to hand. And then Galaxy Soldier will add another Galaxy Soldier to hand. He uses Galaxy Soldier's effect again, pitching the Cyber Dragon to add to summon the Galaxy Soldier. He will then make Cyber Dragon Nova. He will remove a unit from Cyber Dragon Nova to summon a Cyber Dragon from his graveyard. Then use Cyber Dragon Nova as material for Cyber Dragon Infinity. Then he'll activate Raigeki to clear his opponent's board. And swing with Infinity and Cyber Dragon for gain. I wish I would have looked at the player's extra deck. Because it's possible he didn't have Baron de Fleur. Because otherwise, I can think of no reason why not to go into it. Unless he was just so confident he didn't expect a Nibiru when you're doing a bunch of summons on turn one. But hey, Cyber Dragon won. Always happy to see that. We have a Fluffle deck. Or a Fright Fur is more accurate. Going up again, some sort of thing running the Punk Engine. Player summons Punk Xamen, pays life points to add Foxy Toon. Foxy Toon will discard a card. We'll discard Nemesis Corridor to summon Sharusaki. Sharakusai, actually. And then we'll make Ukiyo a Punk Rising Carp. He's actually playing the Punk Engine. He will send away Rising Carp to summon Punk Wagon and Madam Spider. And we'll add a Dangerous Gabu to hand for Madam Spider's effect. And a Wild Picking. Punk Wagon and Madam Spider will make Halki Fibrex. Halki Fibrex will summon Jet Synchron. Jet Synchron and Halki Fibrex will make Mecha Phantom Beast Aurorodon. So even though he's playing a lot of punk stuff, he is still playing Degenerate Aurorodon strats. Aurorodon will summon three Mecha Phantom Beast tokens. And will tribute itself to special summon a Mecha Phantom Beast O-Lion. O-Lion and a Mecha Phantom Beast token will make Den Long first of the Young Zing. Den Long's effect will activate, chaining into Mecha Phantom Beast O-Lion. O-Lion will summon the Mecha Phantom Beast token. And Denlong will add Beyond Earth of the Young Zing. Denlong and the Mecha Phantom Beast token will link off into Borload Savage Dragon. Denlong's effect will activate, as will Sporeloads. Sporeload will equip itself with the Phantom Beast Aurora Dawn. Denlong will special summon Beyond Earth of the Young Zing. Jet Synchron's effect will activate, summoning itself back. And it will link off with the remaining Thrank of Enemy token to make a Cupid Pitch. Cupid Pitch will gain a level. And then it will link off with Beyong and to make Sword Soul Grandmaster Chishao. He's playing a not Sword Soul Sword Soul. Player draws Nemesis Corridor, activates Sword Soul Long, Long One's effect in hand to summon itself and get another token. This is so over for the Fluffle player. He makes Baron de Fleur. This is painfully over. Long Wand deals 1200 damage. Uses Nemesis Corridor to return the Banished Jet Synchron to the deck, summon itself, and then we'll send it away to summon Thunder Dragon Colossus. So as it stands, he has a negation from Borload. He has a negation from Baron de Fleur. Uh, he can negate with Chishao, and Thunder Dragon Colossus prevents his opponent from adding cards to the deck to the hand. He also has one unknown back row. This guy is set up. Three negates. Uh, da, 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 da. He has a monster negate. He has a negate. And he has a negation and destruction. His opponent can't add cards. His biggest monster is a 40-50. And the back row is who knows what. This guy is tanked up. Player draws Fluffle Owl for turn. They summon Owl and activate its effect. Paying 500 life points to Fuse. To make Dangerous Fright for Nightmare. Fluffle Penguin's effect will attempt to activate, but will be negated by the Ash Blossom the player had in hand, too. Fluffle Penguin is negated. The player attempts to activate Fright for Fusion. Fright for Fusion is going to be negated by Borload Savage Dragon. Actually, I just want to real quick check this guy's extra deck. 
Yeah, he doesn't even have a Venom starring Venom Fusion Dragon. If he had that, he could have potentially used Super Polymerization to clear out Borolode or Thunder Dragon. Player will activate Jory Punk Dangerous Gabu to negate the effects of Nightmare Mary. Or Nightmare. Nightmare will chain her effect, sending away Fright for Daredevil. Shishao will negate Fright for Mary's effect. Fright for Mary will chain her effect again. She is not limited to once per turn, apparently. Let's just check her effects real quick. Requiring one Edge Imp and two Fluffle Monsters. Gain 300 attack for each Fairy and Fiend in your graveyard. During your turn only. When this card is fusion summoned, when this fusion summoned card destroys a monster by battle, you can send a Fright for a Fluffle or Edge Imp monster from your deck to the graveyard, equal to the original level of that destroyed monster. When your opponent activates a card effect that targets this card on the field, you can bench one Fright for monster deck. Oh my god, he can actually just keep spamming stuff to prevent his opponent from negating Fright Nightmare. If it was a bigger body, I'd say he stands a chance. Shishao could not get its effect to negate off. Nightmare will negate Dangerous Gabu, or prevent herself from being targeted by Gabu. And she will swing into Shishao, but Shishao is not destroyed by the battle. Let's see. Why was not destroyed by battle? Well, it's something to do with you. No. You were just made using long one. Oh no. We'll call all life's great mysteries. But it is the wall's turn. They will attempt to use Baron de Fleur to destroy Nightmare. Opponent will chain Fright for March. When opponent's spell trap or monster effects activate that targets a Fright for Monster Control, negate the activation, and if you do, destroy that card. This is going to be negated by Borload Savage. Or not. Baron de Fleur is destroyed. Destroy a card, then you can send one of the target front from us to the graveyard. Actually, no. It's not a full negation. It negated the destruction effect and then replaces it with Fright for Tiger. Or Fright for Sabretooth. Sabretooth's effect will inactivate. Attempt to activate. Chishao will use its effect to negate that. Mecha Phantom Beast O-Lion's effect will activate in the graveyard, banishing itself to summon a new O-Lion. Which will go off with Thunder Dragon Colossus to make Burnt Anaconda. Burnt Anaconda will then send away Neos Fusion to make Rainbow Neos? <laughs> what the hell kind of singleton deck is this guy playing? Rainbow Neos will send Burnt back to the deck to send away his opponent's Sprite for Saber and then will swing for game. <laughs> I have so many questions about this guy's deck building. That guy was cracked. <laughs> All right, looks like we have a Despia player, Despia Live Twin. Activate Sunny Snitch, adding Lil out of hand. Lil out with some kiss to kill. They will then link off into Evil Twin Kiss Kill. Evil Twin will use its effect to bring back Lil La. They will then link that off into making an Evil Twin Lil La. They use Lil La to bring back Kiss Kill. Kiss Kill will let them draw a card. They activate Branded Opening, discarding Des er, Dramaturge to summon Alibur. Alibur will add Despia Theater of the Brand to hand. They activate the Theater. They will use the theater, fusing the Dramaturge in their hand with Evil Twin Lola to make Masquerade the Blazing Dragon. Dramaturge's effect will activate to summon itself back to the field. Then they pass to the opponent. Player activates Eldritch's effect, paying 600, and sending it away using the same effect. Player activates Pot of Prosperity, or Pot of uh, Duality. They take True Draco Apocalypse. Kiss Kill Frost will activate its effect, banishing itself to allow him to draw a card because the opponent drew. 
Play with some Ignis Heat, the true Draco Warrior. Life turns 20 to Stitch. We'll make him pay life points for that too. Ignis Heat will activate its effect. Adding a true Draco Heritage to the field. Kiss a Kill will summon back Lil La. And a true Draco Apocalypse will destroy Kiss a Kill. Player activates Draconic Diagram. Lil La will chain her effect to the activation. Lola will add back Kiss Kill to the board. Dragonic Diagram will boost up Ignis. Kiss Kill will undraw a card, which is right for patchwork. Dragonic Diagram will destroy Card of Demise and will add Dynamite, the true Draco fighter, to hand. Dynamite will be summoned by tributing the true Draco heritage. Despia Theater of the Brand is the target of true Draco heritage's effect, which will chain the Despian Comedy being discarded, which will chain the Dynamite, the Dynamite Knight's effect. Dynamite Knight will set True King's return. Despian Comedy will negate True Draco Heritage. Dino Might swings over Kiss a Kill. Ignis swings over Lilla. Player activates Card of Demise, drawing three, sets two, and then loses the Ignis Heat. Player draws Alibur. Attempts to activate Despia Theater of the Branded. Player chains Ignis Heat and chains that into Vanity's Emptiness. Neither player can special summon. This will train the True King's Return to summon back the Ignis Heat before special summoning is turned off. Ignis Heat will set Disciples of the True Draco Phoenix. Player activates Fright for Patchwork. Opponent chains Dynamite, the True Draco Fighter's effect to that. Dynamite sets True Draco Apocalypse. Fright for Patchwork adds a Polymerization and Edge Imp Chain to hand. Player activates Feather Duster. Opponent has no response. Six spells and traps destroyed. True King's Return will chain, as will True King Apocalypse. As will Disciples of the True Draco Phoenix. True Draco Phoenix will destroy Despia Theater of the Branded. Draco Apocalypse will destroy Alibur. And True King's Return will destroy Dramaturge. Player summons Alibur to add Branded and Red to hand. Activate Polymerization to Fuge Alibur and Edge Chain to Masquerade the Blazing Dragon. Edge Chain's effect will activate to add another Fright for Patchwork to hand. Player activates Branded and Red, targeting Dramaturge, returning it to the hand, then using it to Fuse to make Despian Quertus. Dramaturge will activate its effect to summon itself back, which will chain into Despian Quertus before it hits the board to reduce the attack points of the opponent's monsters to zero. Dramaturge is summoned. Dramaturge swings over Ignis Heat for 3,000. Quertus swings over Dino Might for 2,500. And Masquerade swings over the other Ignis just to destroy it. Passes to the opponent's turn. They have one card, 1,500 life points. They activate cards of Demise. Masquerade makes them pay 600 for it. Activates Disciples of the True Draco Phoenix. He cannot activate any more card effects or he will kill himself. Player goes into battle, swings with Masquerade. And that's game. After being sick of seeing True Draco show up every festival and just ruining whatever gimmick that they're trying to have going, glad to see them get stomped in a comeback like that. Let's see what else we got. Ancient Gear. Don't see that every day. Activates Gear Town. Activates Ancient Gear Catapult. Targeting Gear Town. They chain Max C. Catapult destroys Gear Town, summons Ancient Gear Golem. Gear Town summons Ancient Gear Wyvern. Opponent chains Infinite and Permanence to Gear Wyvern's effect. Gear Wyvern's effect is negated. Passes turn to the opponent. Opponent activates Dark Magic Circle. Adds Soul Servant to hand. Change the order of the cards at the top of the deck. Sets one, activates Soul Servant. Reveals Dark Magician, sets a monster in defense mode, passes. Player draws Power Bond, 
activates Power Bond, fusing all three of his monsters to make Ultimate Ancient Gear Golem. With double the attack power, Ancient Gear Golem will attempt to swing. Does piercing damage. When a Gear Golem Ancient Gear Monster attacks, you can't activate spells or traps until the end of the battle. And the player set a max C down. So, not much of a defense. That was short. I don't... I guess this guy's playing Monarchs because he has no extra deck. Summons Beckoned by the World Chalice. Pass his turn. Actually, I don't think this guy knows what he's playing. Player activates Reasoning, which will summon Jane the Twilight Sworn. Activates Chaos Space, discarding Daedalus to add Blacklister Soldier on board at the beginning. Activates Charge of the Light Brigade, milling the top three to draw one, or to add Lumina Light Sworn Summoner. Finishes the Light in the Dark to summon Chaos or Blackluster Soldier on board at the beginning. Wolf is summoned. Luminous Effect activates. Summoning Lumina Twilight. Chaos Soldier swings, uses its effect to get another swing. Wolf swings. And Jane swings. Short. Eldritch Zombie World against who knows what. Opponent sets three, sets one, passes. Player draws seven cities of the Golden Land. Activates Eldlixir of Black Awakening, which will summon Eldlix the Golden Lord. Player activates Metal Reflect Slime, so it's an Egyptian god player. Player activates seven cities of the gold and Zombie World. Opponent flips up Hain Hain. And his opponent will chain Elixir of Scarlet Sanguine. Scarlet Sanguine will summon Doom King Baldurok. Hain Hain will turn Eldritch Golden Lord to hand. Seven Cities of Gold will attempt to activate. Target the back row, which means it can't activate. The player activates Regeki to get rid of Baldurok. Swings with the Hain Hain for 45. for 450. Baldrock will use its effect to summon itself back. Seven Cities of Gold will target the newly placed face down. And Seven Cities of Gold will fuse Doom King Baldrock and Eldritch into Eldritch the Mad Golden Lord. Eldritch of Black Awakening will banish itself to set Guardian of the Golden Land. Scarlet Sanguine will banish itself to set Hakuero of the Golden Land. Eldritch will get will send away Hakuera of the Golden Land to add itself back to hand. And then summon itself with boosted stats. Player attempts to swing with Eldritch the Mad Golden Lord. Opponent activates Windstorms of Aquata to change all its monsters to defense mode. Hakuera will banish itself in order to set Eldlix or Scarlet Sanguine. Pass his turn. Doom King Baldurok will summon itself back. Hain Hain will turn to defense mode. Player summons DD Warrior, equipped with Metal Morph. Opponent chains Conquistador of the Golden Land. Conquistador is summoned and destroys DD Warrior. Metal Morph loses its target. Seven Cities of the Golden Land will target the back row, prevent it from being activated. Player activates and looks of Scarlet Sanguine again to summon the third. Eldritch of the game. Player draws Hakuero. Hakero. Activates Seven Seas of Golden Land. Diffuse that to Eldritch with the Trap Monster to make a second Eldritch the Mad Golden Lord. Seven Seas of Gold will lock down the opponent's back row. Eldritch to Scarlet Sanguine will banish itself to set Guardian of the Golden Lands. Two Eldritches will be overlaid to make Sky Palace Gengara die. Gengara die will use its effect, removing a unit. Which will chain into Doom King Baldurok's effect. 
Balrog will banish the Metal Reflect Slime and destroy the back row, which was Crush Card Virus. Control of Hain Hain was just changed out. Uh, Mad King Baldurok, Trip One Zombie, take one using Mad Golden Lord, tributed Baldurok to take control of Hain Hain. Change all of his monsters to attack mode. Mad Golden Lord and Eldritch the Golden Lord are going to overlay into Super Dreadnought Railkin and Gustav Max. Max will use its effect, rimming unit to do 2000. Super Railkin and Gustav Max will turn to Super Dreadnought Railkin and Juggernaut Lieb. Will to use its effect to boost itself up to a 6,000 body and swing for game. A fine example of who knows what that was. Well, it is getting to be about that time for me, so that is going to be the end of this video. If you caught the stream, like you did know, pal gal, thanks for that. If you're catching the replay, thanks for that too. Goodbye.